Let them associate none with Allah in His service. It is not enough that you act, but your actions have to be righteous actions. They have to be amal that is salih, that is goodly. This is sincerity. Sincerity is not only that you act, it is not only that you obey Allah, but it is that you obey Allah, you act in the right way for the right reason, that you act for the sake of Allah. But more than that, more than just this statement that I'm acting for the sake of Allah, there has to be a seeking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one's actions. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ Whoever longs for the meeting of their Lord, let them act and make their actions goodly. This is what you need in following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? And we strive to follow the sunnah as both men and women. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us about it? And it's amazing if you think about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That verily you have in the Messenger of Allah the very most beautiful of examples. And Dr. Jamila gave us some beautiful examples of living women. But you have in the Messenger of Allah the very most beautiful of examples. But for whom? لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ For whoever seeks Allah and the last day. وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And makes much remembrance of Allah. So this is critical. Why? Because in anything that we do and anything that happens around us, we observe forms and there's realities. When you see someone, there's, they have a form. When you perform an action, it has a form, but it also has a reality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not judge people or actions on the basis of forms. As the Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah does not look at your bodies or your forms, but rather He looks at your hearts. And in some narrations, rather He looks at your hearts and actions. So when you see someone on the street and they don't have the regulation length beard according to your standards, or they don't have the right kind of hijab, or they're half naked. You don't know where they are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Because you don't know what's in their heart, number one. Number two, you don't know how they're going to end up. And we have to understand that we don't know the reality of matters. Why? There's an amazing example from this, from the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We all know about the hadith of intention, right? Actions are by intentions and each person shall have what they intended. We don't reflect enough on the second half of the hadith. The second half of the hadith tells us about the hijrah, the migration, this tremendous historic event that shifted the, the story of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the Meccan phase to the Medinan phase. Now, if I were to ask you, where, where was the hijrah from? Can someone tell, where was the hijrah from? It was from? It was from Mecca. Where was it to? It was to Medina. Was it to Medina? What? Or to Yathrib? Okay, it was not. The hijrah was not in reality to Medina. Where was it to? Where was it to? Okay, we, you know, women are smart, right? They get the point. Like usually when I ask questions like this, you know, some sister in the audience spoils my, my answer because they figure it out. What does Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa tell us about the hijrah? فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ That whoever's migration, right, this, this known action, which began in Mecca and ended where? In Medina. And it was referred to before as Yathrib. Whoever's migration was to Allah and His Messenger, his migration was indeed to Allah and His Messenger. And then there was this poor guy, right? Whose migration was for a woman. And we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to this, this, this guy, right? 
Um, I've, I've done a Giuliani and I've got my cell phone on, so just a second. Um, whoever's migration was for Allah and His Messenger, his migration was indeed to Allah and His Messenger. So the action has a form which it went from one place to the other. Its reality was that it was for Allah and His Messenger. And then there was the person, the Sahabi known as Muhajir Um Qais, the one who migrated for Um Qais, right? He was, a, he was one of the Sahaba, good man, smart man, he heard the words of the Prophet ﷺ who said that this world is a mere provision and the best of its, of its provisions is a righteous spouse. So what did he do? He looked for a righteous spouse and he found Um Qais and she was a righteous woman. But Um Qais was smart. She said, listen, I'd agree to marry you, but I have a condition. You have to migrate, right? You have to show me you're a true believer. Now, he was taken by this woman, right? She had everything he sought. She was a righteous woman. She was an intelligent woman, like her condition tells, right? If you're serious about marrying me, migrate. Show me what you're all about. So he did. But the other companions used to give him a hard time about it. Why? He, his migration was for good intention, right? He wanted to marry Um Qais, this righteous woman. Radiallahu ta'ala anha wa anhu. May Allah be well pleased with both of them. But he missed out. Why? He had a good intention, but he didn't have a great intention. His intention wasn't to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. It wasn't to seek the pleasure of Allah directly. So we should have this high intention in life. And then there's secondary intentions that come. There's benefits. So when you, want to, when you want to marry, you should be seeking the pleasure of Allah. And then there's other things that come. Similarly with everything else. Right? What does this tell us? This tells us many things. One is, when we look at other people, you can't, you can't judge how they are on the basis of how they look. Because you don't know, one, what's in their heart. And we don't know, secondly, how they'll end up. Because as the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ That actions are by their endings. Right? Imam Qurtubi has this beautiful thing, and I believe Shaykh Hamza said it too. I, I was preparing it, and I said, he said it. Right? But I was happy too. There was probably a smart thing to say, right? Imam Qurtubi has this amazing thing, that when Umar who was prostrating to idols, right? And was trying to kill the Prophet Sallallahu He was still beloved. He was with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the beloved of Allah, the, the second Khalifa of Islam, the one whom the Prophet Sallallahu said that if he walked down a path, shaitan would flee from it. Because this was his reality with Allah. Because actions are by their ending. So how could you judge? That person who comes to you and he's dressed in all the manifestations of what we would consider, we would, what we would consider to be corrupt conduct. He's got all the wrong kind of dress and it's hanging like Imam Zaid said, way too low and all that kind of stuff. How do you know how he'll end? And how do you know how you'll end up? Right? So this is something to be careful of. Rather, how are we supposed to look at others? How are we supposed to look at others? What was the look of the Prophet ﷺ? Not only at other Muslims, not only with other humans, but with other with all of creation, with animals. One of the great scholars of the Indian subcontinent said he decided to gather a, had, a collection of 40 hadiths on, on the rights of animals. And he said he couldn't. Why? Because there was far too many hadiths to limit them to 40. So he wrote an entire book instead. Right? Even how we look at an animal, how do we look at Allah's creation in general? Right? We see it. The look is that this is the creation of Allah. This is something that Allah has created, right? So this is how we deal with all of Allah's creation. Our look is a look of mercy. Allah's messenger was sent only as a mercy to all creation. So our look not only at our fellow Muslims, right? Because it's not just about, about your, right, your righteous circle of friends, not only all Muslims, but all humanity, any other, other animals, because the human being is an animal at the end of the day. He's a, we are supposed to be rational animals, although sometimes that's questionable, right? But all of creation, we're supposed to look 
with the gaze of mercy. 